Today we're going to talk about the Ekman-Hilton argument. The Ekman-Hilton argument was originally used to show that all higher homotopy groups are abelian, that is for the pi twos and above are all abelian, but we can use it to show all sorts of other exciting things as well, such as the fact that a bicategory with only one zero cell and one one cell is a commutative monoid. <gasps> and also that a monoid object in the monoidal category of monoids is a commutative monoid. That's a bit of a tongue twister, that one. But first of all, let's just see what the, the Ekman-Hilton argument is. What it says is that if you're given a set with two binary operations on it, both of which are unital, then in fact, those two binary operations must be the same and commutative. So it sort of says you can only fit one binary operation into a set. There isn't enough space if, uh, for another one. As long as those two binary operations interact in some certain coherent way, which we'll now see. So here's the Ekman-Hilton argument. Ekman-Hilton argument. So given um, a set with two binary operations, which we'll write as circle and star, Satisfying the following properties, such that one, circle and star are unital with the same unit, and secondly, that one of them distributes over the other, which is to say that A star B circle C star D equals A circle C star B circle D. So what's happened here is that, that we've switched the order of the star and the circle, and in doing so, we've switched around these middle two things that we're multiplying together. Um, then, so given this situation, then what do we have? Then circle equals star, as it were, those two operations are the same, and the operation is commutative. So, before I say anything else, let's just think about this condition here for a second. You might think that this condition looks very mysterious, but let me give some geometric idea behind it, uh, to, in a hope the hope of making it more obvious. Now, I've written these as star and circle to be suggestive, as usual, because these could be vertical and horizontal composition of two cells in a bi-category. So if we write, write um, a circle B like this, a B, and if we write a star B like this, the horizontal composition, then what does this become? Well, this is A star B. That wasn't very straight, was it? A star B circled with circled with C star D, whereas this one is A circle C Start with B circle D. Oh look, this is something we recognize as the interchange law. So what we're saying is that if we satisfy the interchange law and the fact that these two are both unital with the same unit, then we can show that these operations are the same and commutative. We'll later see that we can actually drop condition one, but it's useful to, useful to use it now. So what I want to do is show how we can prove that this is true very geometrically going round the Ekman-Hilton clock as follows. So uh, what we've got here, we're trying to show that A star B equals A circle B and that they're commutative. So let's put up here A star B and down here at 6 o'clock, I'm going to put 
B star A. Okay, now at three o'clock, I'm going to do the vertical ones. So here we're going to have um, A circle B, and here at nine o'clock, we're going to have B circle A. And what we're going to do is we're gradually going to move the B around the A, and we're going to see how they move around each other in this clock. So there's 12 o'clock. At 1 o'clock, what we're going to do is we're going to insert some units. Um, so B is the same as 1 circle B, and A is the same as A circle 1. So we're going to do that. Now we can hit it with the interchange law so that we have B and 1 side by side, and we have a and 1 side by side. And then we can collapse these sideways, so B, B composed of 1 sideways is just B, and 1 composed of A sideways is just A, so we do indeed get that. And now we can carry on, right? So we're now going to keep moving them in this direction. So here we get, we're going to do B with 1 on that side, and we're going to do A with 1 on this side. Now we're going to perform the interchange law to get 1A here and B1 here. And now we can collapse B vertically and collapse A vertically here. And we get this sideways. Woo! We've got ourselves commutative. Now we can just finish off, off to make the entire clock. So it should be obvious. You should, in fact, be able to fill it all in yourself now. So we have a B. No, that was completely wrong. That was wrong in almost every possible way. Let's try it again like this. Now we use interchange, uh, A1, 1B, and now we go around the other way for the last bit. So it's at 10 o'clock, whoops, we have um, A1 here and B1 here, and then we perform interchange, and we get 1, B, A, 1, and that brings us back to there. So we could, if we really wanted to, write out the algebra of this as well, because this is A star B, and this is A composed with 1 star um, um, uh, 1 composed with B, and this one is A star 1 composed with uh, 1 star B, and that's the same as A composed with B. So I'm not going to go all the way around. You can certainly fill in the rest of the algebra for that yourself. Um, the last thing it's interesting to note is that here we did use the fact that the vertical unit and the horizontal unit were the same thing, because look, we used this as a vertical unit, then we did the interchange, and we showed that it was a horizontal unit. But if you used different units, and you use them you use them in a judicious enough way, you could show that actually um, you can deduce first the fact that the two units are the same, and then you can go around this clock. So I wonder if I can produce that off the top of my head. Supposing that the vertical unit is called V, and the horizontal unit is called H. So what we're probably going to do, I'm sure this is going to go horribly wrong here, um, is, you know what? I'm not going to dare to try and do it off the top of my head like this. Um, I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you at home and leave it there.